I had a conversation with Mort Ween, Werner, who is a senior VP at NBC, and I said, Mort, I really want to get back into producing. If you have anything that comes along, let me know. He said, well, actually, come see me. He said, there's a new show going on out in California called The, to the Tomorrow Show with Tom Snyder. You want to go out there and help get that on the air? I said, he said, the money is short, but he said, and if I were you, I wouldn't do it, but if you wanted, it's yours. So I had a conversation with my wife, because I was going to have to leave her behind with the kids. I said, I'll try it if it's good, if it works, if they, there's money, I'll move you out. If it's not, I'll come home. So I wrote a contract with NBC that allowed me to fire them every 13 weeks. And out I went to my new adventure with, with The Tomorrow Show and Tom Snyder. Tom was an extraordinary man. First of all, we were opening up one to two in the morning, which had never been done before. The rules with NBC and with, um, with uh, the show before us was that um, Johnny Carson, was that we couldn't use any of the talent Johnny Carson used. And we couldn't use any of the talent Johnny Carson had ever used. And we couldn't use any of the talent that Johnny Carson might use someday. And there's a guy named Dave Tebbett at NBC who was a VP who was in charge of making sure of all the above. And I had many meetings with David to try to get something. The good news about that is it forced us to do things that nobody else was doing. And so we were able to define the, today sh the Tomorrow Show with some bizarre elements, some interesting elements. And as I kept telling people, I said, you know, I think the mind of our audience shuts down after the, the 11 o'clock news. And when at 1 o'clock, if they're watching, they're alone. And if they're vulnerable, it's when the goblins come out, when they deal with their fears and insecurities. I said, that to me is an interesting audience and an interesting fix. Let's think about how we talk to that audience. So I don't want to see authors of books. I don't want to see politicians. I don't want to see those people. I really want to talk about maybe bizarre, well, they wanted to talk about bizarre sex, which was, they, they talked about a lot. But I don't want, I want to talk about death. I wanted to talk about things like that. I, that intrigued me. I came back once from being in New York and I saw on the board that they had death on the board as one of the, the topics. I said, good, who you got? Well, we have this professor of thanatology. I said, no, if you're going to do death, you get somebody who's dying. Well, how do you do that? I said, give me 24 hours. I called up the cancer people and I said, this is what we want to do. And we really want to talk about how do you deal with these terminal phases of your life. And we want to deal with it personally and we want to deal with it with an immediacy. They said, well, we, they said, we have somebody who's dying of, and I can't remember what he's dying of, but I said, okay, Here's what I want you to do. I don't want to call the guy, because I never want to feel I have lured him into doing something he's uncomfortable with. If he calls me, then I know he wants to do it. So that's the way we're going to do it. At any rate, I, he did call me. He was dying of Hodgkin's disease, and then did, we did put him on. And it was, uh, we, we, I got a letter subsequently from a lady who said that night she was preparing to commit suicide and she had spread everything out and was already in the TV set was on just as background noise and she had the pills all ready to take and she started listening to what was going on and started really listening and started hearing this gentleman talking about the approach of death and how he was dealing with it. She said, you know, I finally said, if he can do it, I can do it. And so I'm writing the letter to tell you that I had that show changed my mind. 